Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you for joining me at this very important event to celebrate startups and their future in the post-pandemic world. I can think of no better place to be hosting this event, Korea, to champion their role in the recovery, also because Korea is a country that has always embraced startups, a commitment exemplified by the creation of a dedicated ministry for SMEs and startups in 2017. Come Up is an impressive event. By connecting some of the brightest and most ambitious startups with established investors and governments, it will form partnerships that will shape our future and these partnerships are more valuable than ever today at a time of crisis. At the OECD Center for Entrepreneurship SMEs, Regions and Cities, which I oversee, we have been championing a dialogue between governments and businesses for many years now, because we are convinced that by working with businesses, we can also achieve more for government and transform our economies and our societies for the better. Indeed, this event is taking place in very, very turbulent times. The COVID crisis is having a profound effect on our economies and is likely to continue to do so for many years. It has fundamentally changed the way we work, produce and consume, but in the process, it is also providing opportunities for a host of new companies to emerge. And here, I would like to applaud and encourage all the entrepreneurs taking part in this event. Startup leaders and entrepreneurs, you have a key role to play to help our economies recover and build back better. My speech today will focus on how public policies during and post COVID can help you succeed and help share our future. I will argue that all startups can be a positive force for uh, recovery and renewal. I will highlight how governments around the world have reacted swiftly with the measures required to protect lives and livelihoods. Some have intensified efforts to support the most innovative companies, but more emphasis on the different type of entrepreneurship is required to make and sustain a dynamic and inclusive recovery. I will then set out some of the principles that should guide their actions, including by targeting the businesses that we want to shape uh, the economy uh, and uh, adopting an approach that is sensitive to local conditions, sensitive to places. To help frame my comments, I'd like to take a step back and first say a few words on who startups are and what innovation is, as I feel that often our um, interpretations may be too narrow and restrictive. We often think of innovation as uh, involving high levels of R&D spending and cutting edge new technology, and this is true to a large extent. This is true for many businesses, including in areas like uh, software or uh, clean tech, where the potential for rapid growth is significant. This is also true for the, um, the unicorns, those companies that are less than 10 years old and are valued at $1 billion or more. These companies are and remain vitally important. But innovation is a much broader concept that also includes the development of new processes, new business models, new products and markets. And this is what startups represent. Startups offer a new way of doing things, a force for renewal and a force for generating jobs and growth. Prior to the COVID-19 crisis, startups and young firms less than five years old were responsible for around 40% of new jobs in OECD countries each year. Uh, startups are also a force for improvement, forcing firms to innovate. Together, startups are a force that will be central to healing the economic ones of COVID-19. This transformative potential extends beyond high-tech sectors. It exists too in traditional industry, from the wine industry to businesses in leisure and tourism. It exists in construction, it exists in logistics, 
and it exists in retail. Also, many startups, instead of a profit motive, adopt a broader mission to improve the environment, uh, tackle poverty, or uh, increase well-being. This social purpose is too often absent from the startup debate. Despite the growing momentum for larger and uh, established firms to subscribe to uh, environmental, social, and governance criteria, the so-called ESG. So again, it is not only the potential unicorn we should focus on. We need to cast our net wider. Let me now say a few words on what governments are doing in the current crisis context. At the OCD, we have been monitoring the impact of the crisis on SMEs and startups in all OECD countries and many non-member countries since the beginning of the pandemic. At the outset, we found that one-fifth of micro and small firms, including many recent startups, actually, were at risk of failure within three months due to the lockdown measures. Businesses in many countries had to close completely and those that were able to remain open faced significant difficulties through uh, disrupted supply chains and changes in consumption patterns. Many, many were left without clients, without staff, without suppliers, and without revenues. Governments around the world reacted quickly to support their businesses through uh, job retention schemes, payment deferrals, and financial support in the form of debt or equity instruments, grants, and subsidies. And these measures have been essential. This really was the right thing to do. But we should also remain attentive to the risk, the risk of sustaining these measures over the long term. Prolonged support could indeed result in uh, distortions, trapping resources in unproductive or unviable activities, while further increasing SME's debt that may ultimately result in a solvency crisis. That is why, at one stage, an exit strategy will be needed from these measures, along with a plan for renewal. And this plan must embrace the important role of startups. So far, the needs of startups have not been central to the, to the design of the policy uh, responses. For example, most support measures, including uh, job retention schemes, grants and loans are less accessible to startups due to the lack of a trading record. And many startups see little or no benefit from new tax relief measures as they have no or little profit in their uh, formative years, again, which to claim relief. Meanwhile, access to finance has become harder for startups. Startups find it tough to raise the right finance even in normal times, as we have shown in the uh, OECD scoreboard on financing SMEs and entrepreneurs. But in an uncertain business environment like today, this is even more difficult, especially for the most dynamic and ambitious startup who rely heavily on venture capital markets, the so-called uh, VCs. In many countries, this VCs market for early stage investments have collapsed. For example, in the US, early stage VC activity declined by almost 40% in the first two months of the pandemic. Similarly, in China, VC investment in new companies declined by 60% in the first quarter of 2020 compared to the first quarter of 2019. That means three times the drops observed during the financial crisis. So conscious of this risk, countries like um, the UK, France, or Germany, they have taken explicit action to support financing for startups through dedicated funding schemes. And this represents an important effort, but clearly we need to do much more for startups and for entrepreneurship more broadly. There are also long-standing inequalities in entrepreneurship activity rates that we need to address going forward. These gaps are prevalent across different parts of the population, with women and young 
people particularly underrepresented in startup uh, activities. The latest edition of our OECD Missing Entrepreneurs uh, publication that was published in uh, 2019 shows, for example, that women are only around half as likely as men to be involved in starting a new business. And while nearly half of youth express an interest in entrepreneurship, actually only just over 7% in OECD countries were actively trying to start a business between 2014 and 2018. There are also significant gaps in entrepreneurship within countries that often do not receive sufficient attention. For instance, startups are twice as common in London and Copenhagen as in the weakest region in the UK and Denmark. And this represents clearly a waste of potential. A, put a waste of potential entrepreneurial talent. To fully tap the talent pool, we need more and better targeted support for different groups and places. So today, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to remake our future in the recovery. Because while COVID has created challenges, it has also created opportunities. COVID-19 is forcing businesses to adapt to survive, including through new business models, such as adopting new digital solu solutions, including uh, teleworking and online retail. The crisis has also created new opportunities for products and services in areas like um, telemedicine, uh, remote personal care, medical equipment, home delivery, um, food processing, teleworking, online education, contact tracing. At the UCD, through our Digital for SME initiative, uh, we call it D for SME, we have uncovered many, many examples of businesses adapting to take advantage of these new opportunities. And these include, for example, a Dutch SME that offered historical and cultural tour of Amsterdam, and develop a new offering of a app and virtual Zoom tours of the city. This includes also, for instance, a small Latvian 3D printing company which designed the first face shield. Uh, we have also seen new firms emerge to seize the new opportunities. In the aftermath of the global financial crisis, startup rates continue their long-term decline. By contrast, during the current crisis, we are already seeing new business registration increasing rapidly in many OECD countries. In Australia, for instance, um, new business registrations rose by 150% between January and July 2020 and have doubled since May. Likewise, in the US, they doubled between March and July. So to conclude, I would like now to elaborate on what more we can do to support startup and entrepreneurship and sustain the recovery. And here, I would like to suggest three main guidelines. First, we need to boost startup policy. Our economies are experiencing a massive shock. The business stock is being decimated and people are losing their jobs. Startups are needed to replace this business and jobs and in the current environment, the existing scale of startup policy in many countries is clearly not sufficient. To secure a job rich recovery, we will need to go much further in enabling and promoting entrepreneurship in all sectors, from high tech manufacturing to more traditional services. Uh, it means, it means what? Creating market frameworks and institutions that support the emergence of all types of firms. It means boosting efforts to promote entrepreneurship as a positive choice. It means investing in business leadership, management, and digital skills. And it means creating and expanding networks of entrepreneurs to promote learning and share ideas. My second guidelines. We need startup policy that targets the business that we want to reshape the economy. 
This means policymakers should reserve their intensive financial support for those companies with the greatest potential to make a positive contribution to our economy and to our uh, society. Very important. This includes startups that are innovative, green, and with a positive social mission, such as uh, social enterprises. These businesses often face greater problems entering the market, but also provide greater benefits. I have already talked about uh, how some countries have already put in place policy to bolster innovative firms through support for VC markets. It is important that these measures are complemented with wider support to build the leadership skills needed to make the most of this investment and take these businesses to the next level. My third and uh, last guideline for government action is that they need an approach that is sensitive to places, working with and for the regions and cities where businesses develop and grow. The OECD's work on local entrepreneurial ecosystem demonstrate how much regional conditions matter for startup and scale-up entrepreneurs. It is in our cities and regions that entrepreneurs form their networks, access finance, and attract talent. Local partners bring the knowledge, the resources, and the energy to design startup support that works in their setting. We have seen in our case studies how local organizations like uh, the regional growth hubs in the UK, for example, effectively help entrepreneurs access the advice and financing they need. Ladies and gentlemen, as Winston Churchill once put it, never let a good crisis to waste. In the midst of this crisis, we have an opportunity and startup hold the key to that opportunity an opportunity to embrace new business models, an opportunity to accelerate the digital transformation, and an opportunity to develop a more inclusive, more sustainable economy. In short, an opportunity to build back better. At the OECD Center for Entrepreneurship, we continue to stand by the side of governments across the world in this uh, very important mission. And actually, we are delighted to be working very closely with Minister Park Yung Sun through our Digital for SMEs initiative to address uh, digital gaps among the large missing middle of SMEs that are lagging behind in the adoption of more advanced digital technologies. Importantly, this initiative brings together stakeholders from the public and private sector, including the small business owners, and the entrepreneurs themselves. And we also look forward to deepening our uh, partnership in many other areas, including with you, all entrepreneurs and startup leaders participating in this excellent uh, con uh, conference. I wish you all uh, a wonderful uh, reminder of the conference. Thank you very much. Kam San Mida.